let's go back a bit further. The year is 2004. Brad Bourne, a bored freshman in college, combats the tedium of pursuing a degree in psychology by messing around with a program known as Macromedia Flash. Brad first started his programming adventures with a TI-86 calculator back in his junior year of high school, but Flash simply opened an entirely new world of possibilities. His Flash journey began by creating an animation of a character that he first drew in the pages of his high school notebooks. A stick figure with large pants running around with a sword, drawing stylistic inspiration from flipbooks and various Newgrounds animations. Building off of an inside joke started by his cousin about his friend's pants, Brad gave this new character the name Fancy Pants Man. In his first year and a half of programming and animating in Flash, Brad co-authored three different games. Stand, an endless run-and-gun style game, Snowblitz, an endless snowball fighting game, and Snowblitz 2005, a slightly improved version of Snowblitz. However, in the background, Brad had actually been developing a prototype of a game that featured Fancy Pants Man, inspired by the early 2D platformers that he grew up playing. Early builds of the game had extremely crude movement mechanics, graphics, and animations, but the foundation for something special was certainly being laid. Instead of relying on the same tile-built level format that virtually every 2D platformer used, Brad decided that his game would have completely freeform, hand-drawn levels, something that had never really been successfully executed, despite Flash's robust vector drawing mechanics. To make Fancy Pants Man properly interact with his completely customized levels, Brad drew a collision mapping with just a few solid colors that his engine was able to use to determine what kind of surface the character was interacting with. Later builds improved his game more and more, with the levels becoming more complete and Fancy Pants Man being given his signature orange pants and spiky hairstyle. After over a year of development, Brad eventually completed the game, releasing it to the world on the 14th of March, 2006, where it quickly received received quite a lot of praise and fanfare, reaching over 275,000 plays on Newgrounds alone in its first 10 days. People truly loved how unique the game felt, with the ability to run up and down circular surfaces, bounce off springs, and gain speed from moving platforms and slopes, all being cornerstones of what made the movement in the game so satisfying to mess around with. The game was relatively short, with its three levels and boss stage being conquerable in just around 10 minutes on a first playthrough, but thanks to its naturally fun mechanics, many players found tons of replay value in simply playing the same levels over and over while trying to optimize their movement as much as possible. This would later become even more evident, as roughly a year after the game released, a player by the name of Mexican415 would make an upload to a blossoming video sharing website known as YouTube with the title, Fancy Pants Adventure World 1 Speedrun. With the signature unregistered Hypercam 2 watermark in the top left, and a video frame rate of roughly 10 frames per second, Mexican415 appears to steamroll World 1's required three levels, two transition rooms, and boss fight in just 2 minutes and 18 seconds. However, as is the case with tons of gameplay videos posted in YouTube's infancy, this playthrough is unfortunately sped up by an unknown amount. While the movement doesn't appear to be that much faster than in modern recordings of the game, due to the horrible optimization of Flash Player at the time, World 1 was not able to reach its intended frame rate of 30 frames per second on the web, usually hovering around the 20 to 25 frames per second mark. Because everything in Flash Player is bound to the frame rate, this caused the game to run proportionally slower, putting early runners at a severe disadvantage and making it even more difficult to determine the actual time of the run. By comparing the length of the level transitions in this run to another playthrough from this time period, it was determined that the video was likely sped up around two times, yielding a final time of 4.36. However, since it is impossible to know this for certain, the run has not been placed on the leaderboards. Regardless, the most important facet of this run is that, by scrolling down below the video, one can find a comment left by Bradborn himself which reads, Hold down when you're landing back from that first jump thing. You'll roll through the spiders. I really need to put a time trial mode in World 2. 
A day earlier, Mexican415 had actually posted a speedrun of a demo version of World 2 released by Brad to show off some of the progress he had made on the next installment in the Fancy Pants series. Immediately, one could tell that this game was going to be significantly more advanced than World 1. With there being new mechanics such as cannon launching and rope grabbing, as well as far more intricate level design. While Brad was making steady progress on World 2, another playthrough of World 1 would pop up on January 3rd, 2008, as an unaltered walkthrough video uploaded by Leculio12 clocked in at a 422. Aside from the game having moon-like physics due to the low frame rate, this completion was actually pretty solid, with there being only a few hits from enemies and a few missed jumps. However, before another World 1 completion would be uploaded to YouTube, Brad would finally release the highly anticipated Fancy Pants World 2 on January 9th, 2008. Upon its release, players immediately realized why the game had taken almost two whole years to develop. There were almost quadruple the number of levels, each being even more visually impressive than in the first installment, and many of the backgrounds were just absolutely stunning. The unlockable wall jump in World 1 became a default staple of World 2, and other movement options were added as well, such as ledge grabbing and ground sliding. The game was substantially more difficult than World 1, with the final boss specifically being quite a bit more complex. There were also optional snail golf challenges where the character would have to kick a shell to a certain area to unlock a new color of pants. There was also an increased number of six trophies to collect in the game's bonus rooms that were needed to round off a full 100% completion, taking far longer to collect compared to World 1's trophies and something which took considerably more time and effort than just finishing off the final boss. On top of this, the character's general movement and animations were far more fluid, with the hair animation seeing the most drastic improvement. Thanks to various performance improvements being made at the time to Flash Player itself, Brad was able to get World 2 to run at a consistent 30 frames per second, greatly enhancing the gameplay experience. Speedy movement seemed to be built into the core of World 2, as slick surfaces allowed the player to reach greater top speeds than ever before. Thankfully, Brad decided to port some of the gameplay and performance improvements over to World 1, making speedy completions of the game a far more desirable endeavor. Both World 1 and World 2 now had the proper foundations to become truly special speed games, though Brad had still yet to bring his idea of an in-game timer to fruition. Regardless, later that month, a speedrunner named Doppeltronica would put together somewhat solid completions of both games. On January 26, 2008, Doppeltronica completed World 2 in 8 minutes and 44 seconds, only making a few obvious mistakes like this botched cannon launch and a sloppy third hit on the boss. The run was obviously far from perfect, but the gameplay was still extremely impressive for the game's first recorded speedrun. The next day, they tackled World 1, appearing to absolutely shatter the game's previous record by achieving a time of 2.56. Doppel rolled through the spiders after the first drop-off in level 1, correcting the mistake that Brad himself had noticed in Mexican 415's run, and only made a few mistakes, like taking an extra bounce off the spring and barely missing the same jump that Mexican had right afterwards. Level 3 was somewhat sloppy, with more jumps being taken than were necessary, but the boss fight was quite clean. However, this run unfortunately had one tiny issue that prevented it from being the game's second any percent world record. At this spot in the transition room, Doppel performed a wall jump just below the spring, indicating that they had already unlocked the hidden ability before starting the run. This was further evidenced by them briefly gripping onto the wall at several points in the same room. Unfortunately, this classifies the run as being in the Any% percent New Game Plus category as opposed to just Any%. Percent. World 2 would have its second speedrun performed on February 13th, 2008 by a player named Samwise415, who could just be Mexican415 under a different channel name, supported by the last and first video upload dates on the two channels being close, but there is no way to know this for certain. Regardless, the run clocked in at 8 minutes and 25 seconds, a large 19 second improvement over the previous record. Up until the boss level, this run had almost no obvious mistakes, with Sam only taking one hit from the enemies and never having to reattempt jumps. However, in the boss, their second shell hit was quite suboptimal, 
and some damage was taken from the enemies, fortunately not enough to completely drain their health bar. Thankfully, on March 21st, Brad would partially deliver on what he had alluded to with his comment on World 1's earliest speedrun. In a blog post published on BornGames.com, Brad announced an update to World 1 that added a built-in in-game timer, activated by hitting the T button at the start of the game. Furthermore, this timer integrated with the Congregate badge system that allowed players to earn an achievement if they completed the game in under three minutes. Now, more than ever, people were encouraged to play Fancy Pants over and over again to see how fast they could really go. Two days after the update, another New Game Plus run was uploaded by a player named Xantir Dasa that used the wall jump in just two places, the first one being here in the first transition room, and the second one being here in level two. Xantir had video annotations noting small mistakes that happened in the run, like this accidental enemy bounce and this extra jump in level three. Otherwise, the movement in his run was extremely clean, and he even incorporated a new strategy in the second transition stage where he would run along the dip in the ground and land and the second moving platform. Finishing off the boss, the timer read 226.20, 30 whole seconds faster than Doppel's previous New Game Plus record. With his wall jump saving at most just a second or two, this run showed that a sub 2 minute 30 time in any percent was certainly attainable. Additionally, after the run, Xantir showed off a strategy that could be used to save a bit more time, where one could perform a jump while going down this slope and bonk on the ground just before the spiders, landing on the lower platform here after the recoil. He later showed himself landing on the higher platform, something that he noted was around a 1 in 10 chance. At the end of the video, he made this somewhat bold statement that an optimal run would be around 10 to 15 seconds faster than this one but only time would tell if a run like that would actually come to fruition. Three days later, a video appeared on the YouTube channel Taylor Deman, showing them completing the game in 236.13 with the wall jump power, around 10 seconds off the record. Though the run was slower, Taylor hit the 1 in 10 recoil jump that Xantir had shown off proving that it was definitely a viable strategy for future runs. Interestingly, the description of the run indicated that it was uploaded to show people how to complete the game in under 180 seconds for the new badge on Congregate, showing that it was relatively effective in motivating people to speedrun the game. Thankfully, the next day, World 1 would finally get a decent any percent world record, as a player named SharkD59 posted a run clocking in at 256.63 without wall jumping active. The run was definitely much sloppier in execution compared to Xantir's 30 second faster New Game Plus record, as the wall jump power could only really save a few seconds at most. Any percent runs had already come quite a long way, but it was clear that there was still plenty of room to refine the category further. Fast forwarding to November 3rd, 2009, The Void completed an any percent run of World 1 in just 224.67, a run that was even faster than Xantir's New Game Plus record. In level 1, Void landed on the first platform from the recoil jump and saved time by completely skipping running up this second curved platform with a well-timed jump across the gap. Soon after, they skipped a jump to this blue platform by clipping inside of the higher ledge to the left and damage boosting to the surface. In level 2, they incorporated another damage boost off this spider to land on this blue platform to the right, skipping both landing and jumping off of the two earlier platforms. Void used a safer Transition 2 approach that didn't lose any time, and the rest of the run was also quite optimal. This run truly seemed to be fairly ahead of its time, and with less and less focus being placed on World 1 as people moved on to newer and better things, it would take quite a while for someone to successfully challenge the throne. Meanwhile, during World 1's cold winter, World 2 would see a lot of excitement and development, as it was the newer, more popular game with far more potential for improvement. On April 11th, 2010, a runner named NPPro93 uploaded a speedrun completing World 2 in 814.47, indicating that it was 12 seconds faster than the previous record. However, this time is significantly more nuanced than it may first appear. At the start of the video, NP Pro poses in the game's trophy room next to their fastest time of 825.9 a run that would have barely been an earlier verified record if it had recorded evidence. You see, in May of 2008, Brad had updated World 2 to version 1.5, which, among other changes, added World 1's in-game timer to the game. 
NP Pro didn't press T to show the timer during the run, but the final time of the run was able to be viewed thanks to them entering the trophy room again at the end of the video, displaying the new best time. Upon completing level 3, NP Pro entered a completely different transitional stage than the one present in earlier runs. With this update, Brad had also moved this third transition stage to after stage 5 while creating two new transitional stages to place in the gaps after levels 3 and 4. With the two rooms taking NP Pro around 10 and 15 seconds to complete respectively, this put them at a severe disadvantage. After hitting the snail shell into the hole in the first room, the mayor of Squiggleville himself pops out from the wall to award Fancy Pants Man with an ice cream cone for his mad fancy golf ball skills. In a sequence that lasts around 27 seconds, this cone is stolen by the purple rabbit that Fancy Pants Man fights at the end of the game to reclaim it. During this lengthy sequence, the in-game timer actually pauses, as it also does during loading sequences. With the two World 2 records discussed earlier in this video, the time of the run was actually just an estimate of what the in-game time would have been, had it been a feature back when the run was performed. However, this newer version wasn't all doom and gloom from a speedrunning standpoint. Fancy Pants Man is able to slide through enemies more efficiently, on top of there being less enemies in general, and he can perform higher jumps thanks to there being slightly less gravity. These changes were certainly not enough to make up for the entire 25 second gap, but NP Pro still made sure to take advantage of the game's altered mechanics to still handily score a new record. Indeed, NP Pro performed a few small optimizations like damage boosting from this spider in level 4 instead of jumping to this newly added ledge, skipping this platform in level 5 with ledge grabs, skipping this first rolling section in the same level, and jumping past this platform in the fifth transition stage. Later, Brad released yet another update to the game that sought to fix a small input handling issue. However, for some reason, this update also completely reworked the boss, changing the amount of jumps that the rabbit performed in each of the three stages before ascending into the sky from 5-5-5 five, five, and five down to 5-1-1. Five, one, and one. With each jump taking around 2.5 seconds, this equated to around 20 seconds of free time save. Combining this with the other existing differences from the previous update, this thankfully made the then latest version of World 2 the fastest. However, it wouldn't be until September 21st, 2012 that another world record would be set in World 2 any percent. Thankfully, I won't be the one to tell you about it, because this record was set by none other than fellow speedrunning content creator, The Rixer. Hey y'all, Ricky here. Fancy Pants Adventures World 2 was a game I ran very briefly back in 2012. This was the year Speedruns Live was starting to take off, which is a website for racing your friends in whatever game you desire. While I was mainly racing PlayStation games on the site, a handful of Flash games were picking up steam in my friend group. Fafu the Ostrich RPG, Super Mario Bros. Crossover, and Give Up Robot were all games that we tried our hands at getting a good time in. One day, I had a talk with fellow PlayStation runner Peach Waldo about racing World 2. It was one of the best Flash games that we both knew from our youth, so we started racing the game while voice chatting over Skype. Very little evidence of us playing the game back then exists. Peach Waldo has no highlights of World 2 on his Twitch page, and it seems that no race was ever recorded on Speedruns Live. Even though I do recall getting multiple PBs back then, all we have is this one run that you're seeing on screen right now. In golf, I made sure to bounce the snail shell in my head until it reached the hole smoothly. Usually I would quickly reset if this didn't go well. In general, I remember Fancy Pants having a huge focus on movement, saving seconds and sometimes fractions of seconds with better slides and jumps. In level 1, I missed a slide strat that I came up with, losing me 0.3 seconds. In level 2, you can see me use a backflip to reduce airtime to end the level quicker, something I tried to do wherever I could. In level 4, I performed a pretty sick jump to the spring in the bottom right corner, but accidentally wall jumped on a wall I wasn't supposed to right after. Easily my worst level in the run, losing me a handful of seconds. In the level 4 transition, I saved a hefty chunk of time by optimizing my movement, to squeeze under each platform cycle as well as I could. This was probably the hardest level in the run for me back then, but I performed it flawlessly. In level 5, I make a small jumping error near the start, but optimize an oil sliding section later on by taking a shortcut straight down. In the level 5 transition, I tried to use the platform momentum to my advantage to get higher jumps. 
A neat idea, but not executed perfectly. At this point in the run, I was almost 10 seconds ahead, so I just had to clutch level 6 and the boss. On the boss, I came up with a strategy to do the fight faster. After the rabbit jumps around a couple of times, he'll go off screen and spawn spiders. In phase 1, one spider always drops. In phase 2, spiders drop until there are 3 in total. And in phase 3, spiders drop until there are 5 in total. So by not killing the spiders from the previous phases, a total of 5 spiders drop throughout the whole fight instead of 9, saving around 8 seconds in total. I had some trouble hitting the boss with the snail shell, but eventually I closed it out. A new world record of 747. This run was performed at the very start of my speedrunning career, and today it's pretty crazy to look back and the VOD says 10 years ago right under it. Jeez, I guess it's been that long. Anyhow, thanks to Maximum for including me in this video, and for putting this all together. Enjoy the rest of the show! Well, thank you to Ricky for providing that overview of those good old experiences with World 2 speedrunning. Ricky's run wasn't actually added to the game's speedrun.com leaderboard until January of 2022, as he happened to recall the run's existence and share it with the community. Since the video was only a highlight on Twitch rather than being an easily searchable YouTube upload, nobody else had really found or viewed the run until then, making many of the new optimizations he implemented, most notably the no-kill spider strategy in the boss, stay hidden for many years to come. Ricky's crown would later be snatched by I Wanna Be The Pie on August 27, 2013 with a time of 732.37. Earlier, Pi had almost single-handedly pioneered speedruns of Fancy Pants World 3 by spending a year routing the game, optimizing movement, and incorporating different glitches and skips that saved a boatload of time. Their no-tab glitch record of 1043 took them close to a thousand attempts to pull off, and it stood for around two years before being beaten. In level 4 of their World 2 record, they implemented Ricky's wall jump skip to reach the screen platform, instead of taking the normal route to the right. They didn't quite hit the perfect cycles in the transition stage that Ricky had nailed in his 747, and they barely missed this ledge grab and this jump in level 5, but a new major skip in the level would more than make up for all of those mistakes. Instead of falling all the way down to the ground after the first roll skip, Pi stood on the side of the curved platform and leaped to the much later platform with the spring, saving around 15 whole seconds from all of the skipped platforming. In the boss, Pi neglected to use the no-kill strategy, clearing all of the spiders in each phase by holding down the jump button before hitting each of them, causing them to die instantly instead of becoming stunned first. This cost Pi around 8 seconds, but because their shell hits in phases 2 and 3 were more optimal than in Ricky's run, both fights ultimately came out to around the same time. Regardless, the new strat in level 5 had truly carried World 2 to new heights, with a sub-7 30 minute time on the horizon. However, speedrunner Eye of Newt would achieve a record that moved this goalpost quite a bit further, as she had managed to hit this strategy in level 3. This damage boost off the spider found by AJ Comics saved around 15 seconds, making the discovery just as monumental as the level 5 skip first performed in Pi's record. Aside from this, Newt made a small mistake here in level 4, but made up for it by getting a high enough wall jump here to avoid ledge grabbing on the green platform. Newt hit the same transition 4 cycles that Pi did. She made a small mistake at the start of 5, but she cleaned up the missed ledge grab and missed jump that were in Pi's former record. In the boss fight, Newt opted to kill the spiders like Pi had, but it appears as though she didn't know about the ability to kill them in one hit by holding the jump button, as she always stunned them before dealing the final blow. The final shell hit on the boss was slightly unoptimal, but Newt still finished the run with a new world record of 709.9. In the description, Newt indicated that she believed a sub-7 time in the game was possible. However, before World 2's next record would happen, this video's first titan would make his first mark on the record books of Fancy Pants World 1. Oh my god, oh my god.
Yes. If you have watched some of the other videos on my channel, then you are probably aware of DHA. He is an absolutely prolific speedrunner that has claimed hundreds of world records in a wide assortment of Flash games. However, back in 2014, DHA was not exactly the same character that he is today. Like many other 90s and 2000s kids, DHA played tons of random Flash games online when he was younger, one of these games being Desktop Tower Defense on Congregate. By playing on Congregate, DHA learned about the website's badge system, and he started playing more and more games to earn as many badges as possible, including Fancy Pants Worlds 1 and 2. Around this time, DHA also found an Italian website that promised rewards to people who achieved the highest score on certain Flash games hosted on the site. To reach the top of the leaderboards, finding and abusing exploits in these games was necessary, as everyone else was also doing it. He wasn't exactly performing speedruns yet, but he was acquiring skills like glitch hunting and strat finding that would later assist him in his future speedrunning endeavors. Fast forwarding to 2022, DHA is still the first place champion of the entire website, holding the first place trophy in 14 different games, while also having some insanely impressive stats on Congregate. However, it was in December of 2014 when DHA first found speedrun.com a website that had only launched a few months prior. He quickly searched up some of his favorite games, but when he saw that Fancy Pants World 1 was on the site, he knew that it was what he wanted his first speed game to be. And with the first speedrun that he ever uploaded on his channel, DHA claimed the game's any% percent world record by 0.04 seconds with a 224.63, breaking the game's 1,869-day silence. In his run, DHA used almost the exact same strats that Void did, matching the recoil jump to the second platform in level 1. He even cleaned up a few mistakes that Void had in his run, like missing the spring in level 3. However, it seems like his slightly less optimal movement in general caused the run to just barely be a new record. After also claiming the game's All Trophies record, DHA moved on to World 2, uploading a video in January of 2014 of an unusual glitch in the boss that had ruined a world record paced run. Thankfully, the next day, on January 11th, things would go a bit smoother, as he pieced together this absolutely phenomenal run. Six forty seven point seven three, a new world record by over 20 seconds. The run was just so clean and refined. He hit the same cycles that Ricky did in Transition 4, he jumped across the ropes in levels 5 and 6 to save as many frames as possible, and in the boss fight, every single one of the shells hit the boss almost instantly. There were still a few mistakes, like him being hit to the right by the massive spider boost in level 3 instead of the left, and the small spider boost and level 4 being missed entirely, but this run was still unlike anything the game had ever seen. Furthermore, his real-time splits from the boss glitch video and the 647 indicate that DHA set at least two other records before this one that don't have any video, showing that DHA was waiting to get a run that he was truly content with before submitting anything to the leaderboards, a trend that has continued to this day. DHA may have been pretty new to the whole speedrunning thing, but his incredibly refined gameplay sure tried to show otherwise. 
DHA kept playing World 2, finding some optimizations that sought to push his time even lower. Out of his many findings, his largest discovery by far was another spider boost in level 4 that saved an immense 11 and a half seconds, dubbed Super Spider Skip. Before setting another any percent record, DHA decided that he would sweep the entire leaderboard, easily claiming the all trophies record on the 12th, the 100% record on the 13th, and the all pants record on the 15th. DHA had already swept both the World 1 and World 2 leaderboards, as the New Game Plus category in World 1 was not yet being tracked on speedrun.com. However, he wouldn't be able to rest so easy, as a runner named Falco would proceed to do this in the span of just a few hours. Two twenty one point six three, exactly three seconds shaved off from DHA's former world record. Falco hadn't implemented any crazy new strategies aside from skipping this spring with a spider bounce and skipping landing on this bird in level 3. Aside from that, they had simply just optimized the movement in World 1 to an entirely new level. From a YouTube comment, Falco noted that they had attained a PB of 242.7 between these two records, a run which unfortunately appears to have been lost to time. Oh, and DHA must have also gotten a record between these two that he also never submitted. DHA, now missing a record, knew that he had to return to World 1. On top of this, he had unfinished business with World 2 any percent, as he had still yet to implement his new strategies and optimizations into a run. So, this is what DHA managed to put together in the next five months. World 1 any percent record was once again his, and he improved World 2 by 9 seconds without Super Spider Skip in level 4. In his 638, he got the left boost from the spider in level 3, level 4's small spider boost strat, a new head bonking optimization in level 5, and his boss fight had gotten so clean that the phase 1 and 2 shells had hit the rabbit while it was still falling towards the ground. Judging from his RTA live split PB not matching up between any of these records, it is clear that even more historic world records were set during this conquest that he just didn't end up documenting and are now lost to time. This spree of records was truly an exciting time for both World 1 and World 2 speedrunning, but following DHA's impressive show of dominance, both games would enter yet another cold phase. Without anybody challenging his throne, DHA had little incentive to return to these categories to try and improve his times. However, after a new record was set on April 18th, 2017 by 0.06 seconds, DHA would make a fairly swift return, handily snatching it back on the 29th with a 220.2. In level 1, after landing weirdly at the start of this slope, DHA jumped all the way to the highest floating platform here in a single jump, something that had never been pulled off before in a world record run. 
Sadly, in level 2, he missed the jump to this spring, and he actually bonked in between these two later platforms, costing him quite a bit of time. Thankfully, his level 3 was almost immaculate, with him nailing the setup for the bird skip at the end. However, because of his horrendous level 2, DHA didn't even feel like making this video public, indicating that he would be returning shortly for a better time. And that he did, because three days later, he put together this incredible run. DHA completely blew past his goal of getting sub-140 seconds by skipping all the way to a sub-139. He didn't get the super jump in level 1, but everything else seemed to go exactly according to plan. Once again, DHA had set a record so good that it took over two years for someone else to beat it. In January of 2019, a runner named Yes I Member first picked up World 1 speedrunning with an any percent run of 223.30. Unlike most other runners, Ember actually played the game in a maximized window, something that was made possible thanks to runners having switched over to the official standalone Adobe Flash player for runs. This expanded the viewable bounds of the game slightly, having some weird results in a few areas. But overall, it seemed like the game was continuing to run the same as it always had while being a bit more pleasant to play. While improving her any percent PB, she decided to start trying out the other categories present on the leaderboard, eventually claiming the New Game Plus record on May 7th with a 218.53, and the All Trophies record on October 20th with a 333.23. With a second place any percent PB of 218.97, DHA was the only runner left standing in her path to a full World 1 leaderboard sweep. And, on November 25th, 2019, she finally managed to piece together a new record of 218 flat. Compared to DHA's run, there weren't really any areas to point to where time had either been saved or lost, aside from her getting a slightly further bounce jump in level 1. It seemed like the game had now gotten to a point where every new record would simply shave off a small fraction of a second at a time in the absence of any large mistakes to clean up or potential strategies to implement. Aside from maybe the wildly inconsistent super jump in level 1 that DHA had managed to hit in his 220.2. After having his record snatched, it would take DHA a bit longer than usual to come back and reclaim the throne. Still, on February 2nd, 2020, he claimed a 217.83. He honestly wasn't sure if he'd be able to best Ember's time, but a new strategy that he found in Transition Stage 2, where he would jump across the two later moving platforms early instead of waiting for them to meet in the middle, gave him the motivation that he needed. However, this strategy was able to save up to an entire second, way more than the 0.17 seconds that he had beaten the record by, indicating that there was still definitely some room for the time to go lower. However, before another record would be set in World 1, DHA decided that he would make his return to World 2 any percent. On April 7th, 2020, he uploaded a run that displayed an RTA PB of 656, 8 seconds faster than the time that Life Split showed at the end of his 638 IGT world record. Indeed, it seemed like DHA had likely set multiple new records since his last PB, but didn't end up documenting anything until this run. Regardless, with his return to World 2, DHA was seeking to finally implement his Super Spider Skip in Level 4, as a runner named Wishingrad had come across an unusual trick that made it quite a bit more consistent. At the start of Level 4, DHA switched the quality of Flash Player itself from high to low, causing the game's vector graphics to render at a much lower resolution than they would normally for the game's current window size. 
As mentioned all the way near the very start of this video, the game actually checks Fancy Pants Man's position against an invisible hand-drawn collision mapping to determine what kind of surface he is on and what should happen to the character as different buttons are pressed. Though this map is invisible, changing the quality of Flash Player does actually change how it is rendered internally, causing it to become more pixelated at lower quality settings. Because the game is actually using this rasterized rendering of the map to determine collisions, this actually causes the character to interact slightly differently with the slopes in the game. In level 4, this just happens to make the jump from the slope to the spider above slightly easier to pull off. With the help of low quality, DHA nailed the still extremely difficult strategy, and despite having to take an extra jump to land on this spring in level 5, DHA still PBs by over 12 seconds, more than the 11.5 that the level 4 Super Spider Skip saved. Sitting a comfortable 14 seconds ahead of second place, DHA was content with this run, as he left the category alone once again. On July 3rd, a runner named MRL uploaded a World 1 speedrun that started like this. The recoil jump in level 1 had sent him all the way to the main patch of ground, completely skipping the earlier platforms. In level 2, MRL lost a bit of speed while bumping this corner before the door, and in transition 2, he performed DHA strategy a bit less optimally. However, the run still closed off as a new world record of 217.6. The DHA landmine had once again been activated, and he was bound to come back soon. However, before he did, it would actually be a runner named Dilcat that would set the next record in the category, 217.57, a record by just .03. His run only got to the second elevated platform from the recoil jump in level 1, but by cleaning up MRL's tiny mistakes in level 2 and transition 2, he was able to just barely get ahead and claim the record. July 24th, DHA is back playing World 1, looking to do some practice before starting world record attempts. However, after hitting the perfect recoil jump in level 1, he decides to just keep playing to see what might happen. Every other level remains extremely solid, and he claims a new record of 217.37, back on top once again. In the past, when DHA had set a record, it usually took people months or even years to finally take it down. However, this time, the glory wouldn't last so long, as for the next few weeks, Dilcat proved that he wasn't just an average competitor. Through this flurry of competition, six new records had brought the time down by 0.7 seconds, and Dilcat was the one who had managed to come out on top, at least for the time being. With him having claimed the New Game Plus and all trophies records in July, this meant that Dilcat had also etched his name on the list of impressive individuals that had ever achieved a World 1 leaderboard sweep. For the strategies the two runners were using, the game just seemed like it was getting closer and closer to its limit. Thankfully, DHA had found something new to implement that would give him the upper hand. Similar to the Super Spider Skip in Level 4 of World 2, he realized that by changing the game's quality settings from high to low, it was more attainable to get a jump off the ground here in Level 2 that would carry the player all the way to this second blue platform, cutting out another jump. The strategy was still wildly inconsistent, with DHA resetting to it around 9 out of 10 times that he got there, but if he could hit it just a single time on a decent pace, he knew that he had a good chance of reclaiming the record. And on August 15th, it happened.
216.2. DHA had won. Going into 2021, DHA sat comfortably atop the any percent throne in both World 1 and World 2, with nobody really seeming to want to challenge his times. However, it thankfully seemed like that wouldn't last forever, as on January 24th, 2021, this video's second titan would finally make his debut. <laughs> Like DHA and countless other people, Luciusness was one of those kids who played tons of Flash games growing up, with his absolute favorites being those from the Fancy Pants Adventure series. Luciusness had always been a fan of the concept of speedrunning, with him being drawn to optimizing the time trial modes in the various games that he happened to play, but he had never really gotten invested in the speedrunning community itself. However, it was in January of 2021 that he stumbled across the Red Ball World Record Progression video on my channel, as it was starting to get pushed to more and more people by the YouTube algorithm. It was this video that really motivated him to try and become a part of a Flash game speedrunning community, and he was thrilled to find out that his favorite Flash game series, Fancy Pants, already had an active and dedicated community. So, Luciusness picked up World 1 speedrunning, and in the span of 17 days, Luciusness had gone from a PB of 227.13 to being within a second of the world record with a 217 flat. However, most importantly, he had found a brand new strategy in Transition 2 that saved over 2 seconds, dubbed the Lucius Cycle. By perfectly running along this dip in the ground, Fancy Pants Man would just barely reach the first platform without losing any speed, allowing a half cycle on the platforms to be saved. The trick does have a few variations, but they are each thought to require two frame-perfect inputs to execute, still making it quite a large reset point. The reason that this had likely not been found earlier is that it only worked when playing the game in full screen mode, while the game's most experienced player, DHA, had always played in windowed. Increasing the size of the game window had a similar effect to reducing the quality, but instead of making the collision mapping more jagged, it instead made it more smooth, leading to different effects. However, at the time of the trick's discovery, none of the game's runners actually knew that the window size made an impact, with DHA being unable to hit the trick even a single time on his usual way of playing the game, even after hours of practice. Thankfully, they were eventually able to figure out the full screen requirement. With this huge new time save at his disposal, it seemed like it wouldn't be long before Luciusness would claim the world record. However, I don't think anyone could have expected what would happen with his next personal best. I just tied world record. Hell yeah. Good yeah. shit. Oh man, bossing. <laughs> I'm bussing! 216.20, tied world record to the fray. It wasn't quite what he wanted to achieve, but he was still thrilled to finally have gotten a pair of golden pants next to his name. Both titans were now standing shoulder to shoulder atop World 1's ever-growing mountain, but who would be the one to come out on top? Later that very same day, Luciusness claimed the New Game Plus record with a 215.83. He kept periodically playing any percent, sometimes streaming his attempts in Discord voice calls for other people to spectate. Late on March 13th, Luciusness sat down at his computer, driven to do something pretty crazy. He was going to start streaming World 1 attempts on Discord again, but this time, he wasn't going to go to bed until he claimed the world record outright. His attempt session crawled on longer and longer, eventually carrying past 4am the next day. Though he was becoming more and more delirious, it seems like he had somehow conjured the perfect storm for finally dethroning DHA.
Yo! 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 Good job. I literally can't scream. It's 4.20 in the morning. Holy shit. Five days after claiming this monumental record, Luciusness claimed the All Trophies record with a 328.43 to grant himself the untight sweep of World 1. However, Luciusness had bigger plans than just that, as he set his sights upon becoming the second person in history to have both the World 1 and 2 any percent records at the same time. And on April 10th, Luciusness didn't hit the perfect cycle in Transition 4, but he made up for it by nailing a newly found clip in level 5 that saved roughly 10 seconds, an extremely inconsistent strategy that was made a bit more consistent thanks to low quality. Regardless, the rest of the run was very solid, and he had truly earned his spot at the top of the World 1 and 2 throne. With both of his Fancy Pants records gone, it was anyone's guess which category DHA would return to first. And, starting on June 2nd, it would be World 1 where the world record dance would reignite. I got it! <laughs> go! Let's go! Luciusness swiftly reclaimed the record after DHA had beaten it by a frame with the help of a main platform recoil jump in level 1, and a small optimization in Transition 2 where he ran to the spring at the end instead of jumping to it. But he had bunked on the wall right before the boss fight, costing him around half a second. He knew that the time could still go lower. So, he pressed on with his attempts in the Discord voice call. Thanks to a super jump in level 1, something that hadn't happened in a world record since DHA's 220.2, and the lack of a bonk on the wall before the boss fight, Luciusness claimed an enormous new world record of 214.77. And if you recognize my voice there at the end, yeah. that's because this is the same voice call where I was trying to achieve the first sub 4 in Red Ball 4 Volume 3 any percent, something that I would thankfully end up attaining the next day. With this run, Luciusness was essentially done with the game unless somebody beat his record. But that's kind of the exact same outlook that DHA had for his entire history of running the game. Indeed, DHA was not done, and he had yet another trick up his sleeve. By switching between full screen and windowed mode in the middle of the run, DHA figured that he could get the best of both worlds, as some strategies, like Lucia's cycle in Transition 2, required full screen to work, while other strategies, like the massive recoil jump in Level 1, seemed to be more consistent when playing in windowed. With this method, DHA got onto a run on June 20th that started like this. The huge recoil jump and the super jump in level 1 hit back to back for possibly the first time in the game's history. If DHA could close this run out, it had the potential to be a massive new world record. And then... You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> we 
We the fucking bonk, dude. Holy fucking shit. I'm so fucking mad and happy at the same time. He threw away the best World 1 run of his life. However, he really couldn't believe that the run was still a world record, and a pretty sizable one at that. DHA now had the World 1 record, while Luciousness still had World 2. However, both runners still wanted it all. And in the span of around three days in July of 2021, a world record flip would ensue. Oh my god, holy shit! I'm about to cry, dude. Oh my god. The first 133 in Fancy Pants history. Oh my god, are you fucking serious? Did they just get this run? GG, man, I killed it. I completely destroyed this game. Well, that is quite a lot to unpack. First, with Luciousness's World 1 run, he hit the super jump in level 1 and avoided bonking anywhere in the run. However, he lost a pretty considerable amount of time after not being able to move left or right after bouncing off the spring in level 2, something that is not really yet understood. Regardless, he had still claimed the first 133 second run in the category's history, and he claimed to be done with the game unless DHA reclaimed the throne. However, with World 2, how on earth had DHA managed to improve the record by 18 whole seconds in a single run? Well, it looks like it was actually around 13 seconds, but DHA likely had some more unrecorded records along the way. He did save some time compared to Luciousness in Transition 4 by hitting the perfect cycles, and his ending of level 5 was a bit more optimal. But the majority of the time save came from the community finally rediscovering the no-kill spider strategy that Ricky had first implemented all the way back in 2012. With Luciousness also having a slightly unoptimal third shell hit on the boss in stage 3, DHA saved a whole 12 seconds compared to him on just this one split. So, they had shifted places. Luciousness was the king of World 1, and DHA was the king of World 2. Each of them thought that they had possibly killed the game off with their new record, but had they truly achieved immunity from their counterpart? I finally did it! I got a record. Fuck me, dude. <laughs> Man.
Man, this would have been a 132. I'm just, I'm telling you. The flip had happened again. In World 1, DHA reclaimed the record with the help of the low quality jump in level 2 that had last made an appearance in his 216.2 back in August of 2020. Tragically, that bonk just before dropping into the boss room likely cost him his chance at achieving the first 132 second run in the game's history. In Luciusness's World 2 run, he re-implemented the small spider boost in level 4 to save a bit of time and he got the perfect cycle in Transition 4 without making contact with the last platform, saving a second, time that he unfortunately lost in level 5 from an accidental ledge grab. However, the rest of the run was near flawless, and he had reclaimed the record by over 2 seconds. Unhappy with the bonk that he had gotten at the end of his run, DHA achieved a 213.3 on November 9th, 2021 that cleaned up level 3 but unfortunately didn't hit either of the crazy strategies in level 1. With current knowledge, a 212 in World 1 is certainly attainable, and a sub 6 in World 2 is likely to eventually happen one day, but for now, after a world record dance that lasted for around 8 months, DHA and his orange fancy pants man have climbed atop World 1, while Luciusness and his blue fancy pants man remain atop World 2. At least, that's how things were when work on this video began. Knowing that this project was on the horizon, Luciusness started streaming multiple hours of World 1 attempts every single day in hopes of attaining the game's first 132 second time by implementing the low quality jump in level 2. A week passed by, and all that he had to show for his efforts were a small PB of 213.60 and a 213.70 without the low quality jump. Around the same time, DHA found a final blaze of glory strat in Transition 5 of World 2 that involved two extremely precise wall jumps off the left wall, saving an immense two and a half seconds. Knowing that Sub-6 was now absolutely within reach, he started going for the strategy in runs, pouring in over a thousand new attempts to try and achieve the milestone. Both titans were looking to shatter a legendary barrier in their opposing games. So, were they able to pull it off? One thirty-two point four seven. I'm fucking done. What? Oh my god! What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Holy shit! I. Oh my god! What? On day eight of streaming, Luciusness had jumped all the way from a two thirteen point six to a two twelve point four seven in a single PB. The largest world record improvement with the title changing hands since, no joke, The Void improved the record from 256 to 224.7 back in November of 2009. A jump like this felt completely unthinkable at this high of a level, but he had somehow managed to produce this almost spotless run. The large jump in level 1, 
Lucius Cycle in level 2, Bird Skip in level 3, just a handful of frames lost on boss hits, and really zero notable mistakes. World 1 had finally gotten the record it deserved. For World 2, DHA had brought the record down all the way to a 558.37, a run that came two days after his first sub-6 on July 7th. DHA had shaved off more from the world record than his Blaze of Glory strat in Transition 5 saved, though he also implemented a new intro golf approach first used by Luke Plays and refined by himself and Roblox8192 that saved a bit of time. The run had the Spider Boost in level 3, Super Spider Skip in level 4, Ideal Transition 4 cycles, the Clip and the Roll Skip in level 5, the Wall Jump Strat in Transition 5, no boss spiders killed, and all airborne shell hits on the boss. The singular mistake that can clearly be pointed out is this missed jump at the end of level 6 that lost around a second. This time, DHA archived all of the records that led up to the run that he actually felt content with submitting, totaling six records in the span of six days. So there you have it, 212.47 and 558.37, two truly incredible runs in two truly special games by two truly amazing speedrunners. They are the only ones to have ever felt what it is like to stand atop Fancy Pants' two most popular speedrunning categories at the same time both on multiple occasions, but for now, they have each claimed one game for themselves. Still, the current World 1 and World 2 any% percent leaderboards paint a very clear picture. In first and second place, there sit two dominant titans in close pursuit, and below them, there is just everybody else. I guess only time will tell if a third will ever be able to close the monumental gaps that they have created. Over Fancy Pants World 1 and 2's more than 15-year-long speedrunning history, there have been an incredible amount of strategies and optimizations discovered that have continually pushed the games to greater and greater heights. The dedication put forth by the two games' many world record holders is absolutely astonishing, but for two runners in particular, DHA and Luciousness, that drive has reached a level that is truly something special. Their current world records in Worlds 1 and 2 may seem like displays of skill that are near perfection, but they are likely not the end of what these games have to offer. In World 1, there is actually currently an unimplemented strategy called the Kreech Clip found back in May of 2020 which can save up to half a second. Very rarely, when attempting to damage boost on the ledge here to save a bit of time, Fancy Pants Man will actually get sent to the side and will start standing upside down on the bottom of the platform. Sometimes, after running to the left, the player will bizarrely teleport into the wall left of the door. Fancy Pants Man will start rapidly shaking, and if the jump key is pressed while he is positioned fully inside of the wall, he will clip back and bounds right in front of the door. Unfortunately, with only a few people ever managing to pull off the strategy even a single time, it would currently take completely unforeseen dedication or immense luck for it to ever be seen in a world record. However, a run that Kreech Clip can be seen in is the World 1 Any% percent task by Roblox8192 and the Amazing Aladdin clocking in at a jaw-dropping time of 207.43 over five seconds ahead of Luciousness's record. Another notable strategy implemented by the TAS is a much faster spider bounce cycle in level three, something which humans have not yet been able to pull off. Furthermore, Roblox has also authored a World 2 task clocking in at 540.53, almost 18 seconds ahead of DHA's record. In terms of new strategies, the TAS implements a floor clip in level 2 and a vine clip in level 4, and it achieves a faster cycle in transition 4 that has yet to be matched by humans. Both of these TASs are extremely well put together, with them boldly highlighting the true theoretical potential of these games. But with DHA actually managing to beat the World 2 TASs intro golfing section in real time, it is clear that there are still some improvements to be made. Regardless, these TASs underscore the fact that Worlds 1 and 2 have not yet hit any kind of hard limit. A 2.11 time in World 1 is likely feasible, and a low 5.5x time in World 2 looks somewhat realistic. 
It all comes down to whether a runner, whether it be Luciusness, DHA, another top runner, or a new player entirely, is dedicated enough to push these games closer and closer to the asymptote of perfection. However, all of this analysis on Worlds 1 and 2 specifically begs another question. What about all of the other games in the Fancy Pants series? In 2011, the Fancy Pants Adventures made its debut on console and mobile platforms with modified versions of Worlds 1 and 2 and a brand new World 3 to explore. This game is actually pretty good, but there are some extremely significant drawbacks that make it really undesirable as a speed game. There is no in-game timer, there are lengthier loading screens between each stage, and after every single level, there is an unskippable 10 second long pop-up menu that presents you with some information like the number of stars and squiggles you collected. Combined with the decreased accessibility of the game due to it being a paid console release rather than a freely playable PC one, this game has only ever accumulated 32 full game runs. Thankfully, World 3 released the next year as its own Flash game. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, there was no longer a built-in in-game timer, intrinsically motivating less casual players to speedrun the game and making competition a bit less fair due to inconsistent loads. Like it had in its console release, World 3 featured required combat rooms that were a somewhat distant departure from the constant, fast-paced movement that made up the framework of the first two games, making it a less desirable option for some runners. Still, World 3 is quite an excellent speed game thanks to all the glitches, skips, and satisfying movement opportunities, specifically those granted by the newly added pencil. And I'm guessing that nobody will be shocked to hear that DHA is the runner who has managed to absolutely dominate this game. With his highly optimized any% percent, any percent glitchless, and New Game Plus records all being incredibly impressive, incredibly optimized, and far ahead of second place. There was a remix of World 1 released in 2014 that was quite a fun experience, both from a casual and speedrunning perspective, but it frustratingly lacked an in-game timer just like World 3. And I'm sure you'd never guess it, but DHA also holds the any% percent record in this game by a pretty sizable margin. The next game in the Fancy Pants series came in the form of a side game called Fancy Snowboarding. It definitely didn't resonate with everybody, but it did come with a built-in in-game timer. Sadly, it was somewhat broken out of the box, with decimals under 0.1 being displayed in the wrong place value. This somewhat tainted any casual attempts at speedrunning the game, as the timer bug would make a time like 9.07 actually read slower than a much faster time like 9.60. Fortunately, I was able to modify the game to fix this issue by replacing some overcomplicated code blocks with a built-in flash player function that properly rounded and displayed decimal numbers, making speedruns of the game significantly easier to properly track. In 2017, Brad released Super Fancy Pants Adventure for PC and mobile platforms, with it being the most ambitious title in the series yet. It featured a pen that improved upon the combat mechanics of World 3's pencil in many ways, while also adding in an incredibly fun pen gliding mechanic. Furthermore, the game had six short time trial races that players could complete repeatedly in hopes of optimizing their times further and further. Sadly, an in-game timer was not available for speedrunners seeking to take on the full game, something that could have been extremely problematic given the lengthy loading times between stages. But the community was thankfully able to mitigate this by creating a live split auto splitter for the game that paused the timer during loads, keeping the playing field level. However, the most unfortunate part about SFPA from a speedrunning standpoint was the fact that lots of skips and glitches used in runs were targeted for patching, such as an infinite jumping glitch, a cutscene skip at the beginning of Squiggleville, and a pretty significant shortcut in the volcano area. Regardless, the game is still an absolutely excellent speed game. With the game actually having been featured at Awesome Games Done Quick 2020 by former FPA World 2 record holder Eye of Newt. Despite its extended length compared to other entries in the FPA series, the game has still managed to become incredibly optimized, especially in the New Game Plus category. But Luke Play's current any% percent record of 1845 without loads still stands a whopping 2 minutes and 30 seconds ahead of Newt's second place time. 
with DHA sitting in at a more distant third, Luke has also proven that there is actually more than one DHA destroyer in the Fancy Pants community. The DHA destroyer the strikes DHA. again. <laughs> in 2019, Brad released a bundled remaster of Fancy Pants World 1 and World 1 Remix, again for PC and mobile platforms, which improved on the originals in lots of different ways, most notably with the movement. Aside from the time trial modes present for each individual level, the game did not ship out of the box with an in-game timer. However, Brad did actually add one in with a later web release of the World 1 Remaster, intended to be a preview for the game's next update. Sadly, the timer has proven to be extremely inaccurate, making it essentially unusable from a speedrunning standpoint, requiring loading times to be removed manually for the game's top runs. Regardless, Luke Place has managed to sweep the Fancy Pants and Cutie Pants records for both World 1 and World 1 Remix with some extremely impressive times. That that brings us to the latest installment in the Fancy Pants series, Fancy Pants World 4, a segmented flash release of the first three-fifths of SFPA, still with no in-game timer. Sadly, a load-removing auto-splitter currently does not exist for these three parts, unfortunately making the playing field a bit uneven. Because World 4 is almost exactly the same as SFPA, it's not really surprising that Luke has the majority of the records. And there you have it. Most of the Fancy Pants games after World 2 have still proven to be amazing speed games, with many categories seeing both high levels of competition and dedication. But nothing has managed to quite stack up to the first two releases in terms of run quantity and record optimization. Unfortunately, the lack of accurate in-game timers with the later releases have simply led to less casual players seeing the value in playing the game over and over again to see how fast they can really go. World 1 is certainly not even close to being the best casual experience in the series, but it has proven to be extremely easy for newcomers to start speedrunning thanks to its short length and simplicity. Coupled with the incredible relevance that it held during the Flash game era and that in-game timer ticking in the top right corner, it's really no wonder why it has proven to be by far the most popular speed game in the series. World 2 is an incredibly more robust game than World 1, with it still being considered by many to be the pinnacle of the Fancy Pants series, and I sincerely hope that its in-progress remaster is able to come to fruition sometime soon. The game's increased length and complexity is likely why it has received a bit less general speedrun activity compared to World 1, but that has certainly not led to a decreased level of dedication at the top level. As DHA and Luciousness are titans of World 1 and World 2 speedrunning, so too are World 1 any percent and World 2 any percent the titans of Fancy Pants speedrunning categories. However, as mentioned before, many of the later games in the series are still special in their own unique ways, both casually and from a speedrunning perspective. So, to prepare for this video, I took a trip through the Fancy Pants series' entire catalog of entries, and I was absolutely blown away by how good all of the games still hold up. In particular, Super Fancy Pants Adventure was incredibly enjoyable, and it is truly hard to believe that the game is actually just a Flash game coded in ActionScript 3 running through Adobe Air, a runtime that allows these games to run as installable applications on tons of different platforms. In my opinion, the Fancy Pants Adventures is the greatest series of 2D platformers ever produced on Flash. And it's pretty remarkable that almost all of its entries are easily accessible for a price tag of zero dollars. The series is truly a product of the platform that it was built on, and that's probably why the games still remain on that platform to this day. What other game creation utility would allow a developer to hand draw large, vector-based levels that a smoothly animated protagonist with fancy pants can explore? Regardless, the first two games in this series managed to draw in tons of different world record holders who each impacted the games in their own unique ways, but it was two truly special runners from this bunch, DHA and Luciousness, that truly brought these games to fabled heights that were beyond anything else in the series. The truly inspiring story of these two titans is something that I think any speedrunning community can look up to and admire, and I can't wait to see where things end up going from here. But we can't forget that all of this was made possible because a bored college student decided to breathe new life into a doodled stick figure with fancy pants by bringing him into the digital realm. 
Thank you for learning about the speedrunning story of the Fancy Pants Adventures, World 1 and World 2. If you made it to the very end of this hour and 20 minute long documentary, thank you so much. I have worked extremely hard on this project to make it a reality, but none of this would have been possible without the help of Dillcat, Roblox8192, DHA, Luciousness, Jez, the esteemed voice of Bradborn Luke Plays, and, of course, the Rixer for narrating his segment of the video. If you haven't seen Ricky's videos yet, I highly encourage you to go and check out his channel, as he produces some of the best speedrunning content out there. Additionally, I highly recommend checking out the Fancy Pants Game Rankings video over on Luke Plays' channel, as he provides an even deeper overview of what this series has to offer. And I also hear that he has a Fancy Pants Iceberg video in the works, so keep an eye out for that. The support that I've been getting on these videos, especially as of late, has been absolutely amazing. And it really blows my mind that I'm over 75% of the way to a milestone that I've distantly dreamed about ever since I was still playing Flash games in the back corner of an elementary school classroom. Also, since I've had some people ask me about it, I did finally decide to launch a Patreon, which has just one pay-whatever-you-want reward tier that charges by video. Paying even the default price would cover the potential ad revenue of not just yourself, but at least a hundred other people. So that's something to keep in mind for both myself and any other creators you may watch. The rewards are pretty minimal, as I want to be able to stay completely focused on creating high-quality videos in a timely manner, but I still think you may find it worth your while. So thank you all once again, and I hope you find the time to come back for the next story I have to share.